If you're in an Ableton Live session and you're trying to figure out the key and BPM of either your reference track or maybe a track you're remixing, I'm gonna to explain to you how to do that with only Ableton stock plugins in a very, very quick amount of time. Let's go. All right, so we are trying to figure out the key and the BPM of a track. Why you'd wanna do this, there's many reasons. Maybe you're using it as a reference track, maybe you're remixing it, maybe you're sampling it. Number of reasons. First and foremost, the easiest way to do this, honestly, is just to Google it. With popular tracks or tracks that are relatively popular at all, most of the time it'll just come up. You can just type in the name of the track and then key in BPM and it will come up. But a lot of the times, especially if you like underground or unpopular music, uh, like I do, like bass music that you know isn't very well known, you might, may or may not need to use this technique. So this is what we're gonna do. So first I'm gonna import our track. We have a good old fashioned Troy Boy track here for our example. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line up our transient right on the bar. So what I mean by that is this, this is the transient right here. So like, obviously this is the first hit or the first like peak of this track. What, we, what we're looking for is this to be lined up right here. So the way we're gonna accomplish this is we're gonna command E to chop right here and we're just gonna delete the intro. We can bring this back later. This is just for now. And what we're gonna do is we are going to line this transient up right on the first hit right here. And by the way, we can hold command, grab this and move it, or we can command arrow to kind of give it like a really small nudge. So right about there, we see this is obviously a kick based on the shape. And uh, now what we're gonna do is chop the extra fat here. I'm gonna move it to the left because if we're going up this way, now we're looking at like 200 BPM and there's just no way that's accurate. We're gonna bring it way down. So notice how we uh, talked about our snare hitting on the three. So that's this note right here. So basically right in the middle between 11 and 12, we have our So when you get it, you'll just see everything lock right up on grid. And that's why we want this initial transient up here to match up perfectly because now we can see, like we literally don't even have to check it. We can see all these transients up here are locked like right on to these lines. There's a little bit of shuffle and swing in these, in these snares, so they're not perfect. We have like a little bit of movement here, but they're not like increment, they're not incrementally like increasing to the right or to the left. So we know this is on BPM. And if we go down a couple bars, we can see our big drop is right on the bar. So we're good to go. We now know that this is at, and if we look up here, 115 BPM. So by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the way I was uh, moving that up and down is just by adjusting the master BPM of the track. So that's up here, moving this up or down. So next we're gonna figure out what our key of the track is. So the easiest way to do this is, first off, we're going to isolate the lows. So we're gonna put an auto filter on this track. So we can grab an auto filter or we can grab an EQ8. I personally like to use auto filter. It's a little bit stronger. And we're gonna isolate the sub frequencies. So we can toss this at like 200. So basically what I'm doing here is we're trying to determine what note our sub frequency is. And usually most of the time on the one, so like on the hit or like on the first hit of the bar, it is typically most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, that's gonna be the, the root note. So that's gonna be like the fundamental note of your key. Uh, the reason for this is because like the, the one is like a sense of like landing and the kick. And so that's typically like the root note and then it'll kind of go up and get more adventurous from there. But we typically have that hit and then as we listen, it'll kind of like go up and do some different stuff. Dope. So now all we have to do to figure out what key this note is in, we're gonna grab a tuner and then we're gonna grab a spectrum. So I'm command Fing to search and grab these quick. So in a perfect world, the tuner would tell us automatically every time what note something's in. Usually it doesn't work. So I kind of use it as a reference to get close and then we're gonna use the spectrum to do the rest of the work. So in this situation, this is actually giving us a very strong indication of it being in C. 
It's really not too far off. It's not moving all sporadically. Now we're gonna cross check this with our spectrum. So we're gonna pop this open so we can see everything big. And what we're looking for here is our formant. And our formant can be described as our lowest, loudest frequency. So basically like the frequency um, lowest, loudest, so the one that's like right on the peak right here, this is what determines what uh, note or semitone a sound is resonating in. So if we come up here and we pretty much to the exact middle, we're gonna see that this also says C. So with this information, um, we can fairly assume that this track is in C and now we know it's in 115 BPM. So this should be pretty easy and similar to do across the board in all different tracks, all different styles. Um, so I hope this helped you guys and I will see you next time.